everyone. Welcome back. It's Larry again. I'm doing another beer today. A Hoppy Imperial Stout. It's similar to uh, if you ever had a beer called Storm King by a brewery called Victory Brewing. It's it, This is the beer I'm shooting for. A uh, nice Hoppy Imperial Stout. High gravity, uh, full of flavor, and a lot of um, hop finish to it. So stay tuned. Let's start with the green bill. The last time I made this beer, I used almost entirely pale ale two-row malt. Um, it was a really good imperial stout, but it did not have the same taste as what a Storm King did. And what I realized in talking and surfing web forums is that uh, part of it is because uh, a lot of it, I believe, is a Pilsner malt that they use instead. So what I'm doing this time is that I'm doing sort of a blend. I'm going to keep my old recipe and introduce some Pilsner malt and take out some of the pale ale malt and see how this turns out. So. This is an experiment as well as a homebrew video, so let's give it a shot. I'm going to start off with about 9.5 pounds of two-row pale malt, about 5 pounds of a Pilsner malt, about 2.5 pounds of a Vienna malt, and a pound each of roasted barley and a Carafa Type 2. So I'm going to gr uh, crush these all up through my mill, and I'm going to, and I'm going to mash them. Finally the greens are all done crushing. There's a lot of them to crush, but you can see here's the roasted barley and the carafa. Underneath it is the uh, is is the rest of the grain. So I'm gonna throw this now into the mash tun and add my water. Alright, here's my mash tun. I went ahead and threw in um, all that green in there and then I added about uh, 20 quarts of 170 degree water. So uh, I stirred it all up, now it's going to steep. I'm going to put the lid on and then I will let it sit for about 45 minutes. i got to take the uh, temperature here and make sure I know what I'm dealing with. So it's stabilized about, a, well, it's not good, We're about 155, oh it's a little hot in one spot. I was shooting about, for about 155. So, you know, 155, 153, 156, well, you know, it's about where I want it to be, so that's good. Now it's time to put the lid on. And tighten it up and let it sit for 45 minutes. While the mash is going on, I'm going to talk about my hops here. i got three types to, to throw in here today. I have two ounces of Centennial pellets. That, that's that's going to go right at the beginning of the boil. I have uh, some some cluster pellet hops, which will go in uh, somewhere in the middle of my boil, and towards the end I'm going to throw in some Cascade pellets here. So this is my uh, my hops, so uh, let's, let's see how this works out. It's been 45 minutes, I've just taken off the lid off the uh, mash tun, and you can see it's stirred up really nice. It uh, smells delicious. And uh, I'm going to do a starch conversion test now to make sure the mash is complete. And then I'm going to um, maybe check the pH just for uh, record keeping sake. But uh, then I want to start uh, draining this thing. Now it's time to start doing my, bar my batch sparring. So I want to start uh, cycling the wort here to get some clear wort. As you can see this stuff looks like motor oil. Use motor oil. It's so dark and black. Uh, so it's going to be hard to tell when it's running clear, but it's all right. So what you do is uh, you pour a little, little bit out, just sort of the, to sort of set the bed of grain, so that you don't get any little bits of grain or husks or anything in here. So I do this a few times to uh, clear up the wort, and then I'm going to drain this into the kettle and probably repeat. How I think three times in order to get the six and uh, two, two thirds gallons of water I want for my kettle. All right, the first first batch uh, sparg is complete. Um, this is number two. I'm gonna put a couple more gallons of 168 degree water. Back into the mash tun. Maybe a little bit more. So, then you stir that up, 
and let it stand for a few minutes to try to get some more of the sugars out of the grain and then I'm going to repeat my first batch sparg again. Alright, I, I batch sparred three times um, to get about six and a quarter gallons. Um, I actually had to add about a half gallon more of actual water to this to get about 6.6 .6 gallons of pre-boiled wort. That's what I I'm shooting for because I expect about a gallon of it to boil off. So, um, so let's uh, turn on the heat and get it boiling. It's finally starting to boil. I'm going to mark this as my T minus 60 mark. Going to count backwards down to zero. So, as it starts to boil, I'm going to put my two ounces of Centennial hops in. Come on, get in there. And I'm going to let that go until my next edition. All right, it's the T minus 30 minute mark. I'm going to put in a whole ounce of my cluster hops. Throw those in there. And uh, let's keep on counting. T minus 15 minutes. Now it's time to add a Whirlflock tablet, which is this little tablet here. It helps to uh, clarify the uh, beer later. Then I also have, because it's a high gravity beer, I'm going to put about a half teaspoon of yeast nutrient in there. To help the yeast uh, dominate this high gravity beer and then I'm going to throw in my um, immersion chiller to sanitize it. T minus five minutes now it's time for the final addition my ounce of cascade hops just going to throw those right in there and wait five more minutes and we'll be done. Time is up uh, T minus zero so I'm going to turn off the flame turn off the fire I'm going to uh, start running water through my immersion chiller, which I have shoved in here. And it's going to cool this work down in about, uh, from about, uh, well, 210 degrees down to probably about, uh, you know, 72 degrees in about 20 minutes. I siphon the word into the carboy. It's about five and a quarter gallons. I am about to uh, oxygenate this thing, add some oxygen to it, and then I'm going to pitch the yeast. I added the oxygen for a couple minutes, got it nice and bubbly. Now I'm going to add my uh, yeast starter here. It's going to pour it right in the top there, and uh, and I'm going to then inoculate the uh, wort and put on the airlock. I've got the airlock on. It's uh, it's in its storage space. It's going to stay here for uh, for uh, about 10 days while it ferments, and then I'm probably going to put it into uh, my keg. Two days later. Things fermenting pretty good here. Nice, nice big Krausen. Uh, nice big head of foam there. So uh, I'm gonna let this finish out, and uh, then I'm going to keg it. 14 days have passed since brew day. Time to transfer my beer into the keg and carbonate. I've got my auto siphon already in here, and uh, the other end down in my keg off, uh, just out of view here. I'll show you that in just a minute. But uh, this little tool is kind of nice. I don't have to use water. I don't have to suck on the hose. I'd, I'd never do that anyway. But but uh, all you gotta do is. Just give this thing a little draw, and I give it a little push, and it just starts coming right on out, goes right down to my keg, which I'll show you in just a moment, and it just let, us let it siphon out, and wait five, ten minutes. So now you can see where this is going down into the keg, it's slowly filling right now, and uh, as so it fills up, you know, I'll cap it and uh, carbonate it. Siphoning complete. Just get the rest of that out of there. Oh yeah. This is a very high gravity beer. I don't want to waste a drop. Relatively expensive um, beer compared to others because of the high malt content. All right, and then I'll put the uh, lid on, and then I'm going to carbonate it. Get some of the oxygen out of there. Turn this on, and. Trying to get uh, the oxygen out of there, 
and replace it with carbon dioxide. And then that's going to go in the fridge. All right, this is the big day. Three weeks ago, I started making this batch of beer, and right now it's sitting carbonated in this keg right next to me. So I'm going to give it a taste. Oh man, this is going to look good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks delicious. I'm going to have to try this one right now. That looks beautiful. Nice dark color to it. Nice uh, foamy head. Some carbonation. You see the bubbles coming up, barely coming to the top there. You can't see because of the dark color of the beer, really, the bubbles coming up. But, uh, but it's carbonated. Oh, man. Let's give this a taste. Do this. Oh, man. Definitely a imperial stout. Definitely a hoppy imperial stout. Oh. Hmm. Oh, is that good? Oh boy. Um, tastes a little different than the last batch I made. Uh, I told you at the beginning of the video I um, changed my green bill a little bit to make it lighter. Uh, although it's a good beer. Uh, I think I like my original grain bill. Uh, my original grain bill. So I think I'm going to show that original grain bill right now on the screen. And uh, this is great. Um, so uh, in my opinion, good beer. Uh, my better opinion would be uh, my original recipe. So uh, follow these ingredients you see on the screen here, wherever they might be, and uh, use that as your original grain bill. Forget the pilsner malt. Use all two two row pale malt. Uh, in my opinion. But uh, hey. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this anyway. Mmm. Oh, is that good?